So to introduce the first two, we're going to do a little bit of a tag team. We've got uh, Dr. Alison Milner. Now, she's a senior lecturer at the University of Melbourne. She's also on our, the Mates in Construction Academic uh, Reference Group. Um, she's done a lot of work in, around workplaces and suicide. Um, she works closely with the international organisation that looks at this. Uh, well published. She's uh, very articulate and very passionate about this. And we've got Jorgen Gulstrop from Denmark. Jorgen uh, has the same passion that Alison has. Jorgen is the, uh, he's the lone nut. He's the one who, who, when prompted, stepped up and said, well, I'll give the Burt Suicide Prevention Project a go. And, uh, and from that, willingness to step forward uh, is part of the reason we're all gathered here. So um, Jorgen and Alison are going to talk about uh, what does a plan going forward look like for construction? So please welcome Jorgen and Alison. All right, this is a, a bit of a tag team, so um, I'll get to start up and, uh, and hand over to Alison. So, uh, and also I want to recognise Alison is not only on our academic reference group, she's, uh, she's um, our academic, uh, national academic director as well on our board. Uh, so what we'll be talking about here today is a bit of a process uh, that's been started within the industry to try to develop a blueprint for, for better mental health and suicide prevention uh, for the construction industry. And uh, I'll plan to talk a bit about the background to why we're doing it, how we got here, and, and uh, then um, Alison will talk about what we've actually found as we start researching what good practice looked like in this area and some of the work that comes out of that. Um, firstly, I want to say that the idea of having a blueprint for better mental health for, um, uh, for the construction industry is not entirely new. As you, as you heard earlier, the, the mining industry already had a blueprint. Uh, the first responders, the ambulance and, and police forces have developed a blueprint for better mental health for their industries as well. So uh, the US construction industry have been uh, developing a blueprint for better mental health as well. So, so there's been plenty of them around, so that could sort of uh, make us feel like uh, we're following a bit. But I don't actually think that uh, that's a fair way of assessing the construction industry in Australia. I think in many ways um, we've actually been leaders when it comes to mental health been first adopters when it comes to considering mental health and suicide within the industry. And I just want to take us briefly through some of the history behind that. Uh, more than 20 years ago, a number of the industry funds, the superannuation schemes and redundancy funds, and, and important people within those funds um, looked at mental health initiatives and looked at the mental health within the industry uh, and saw there was a problem. Uh, in Victoria, Incolink, um, established an industry chaplaincy program about 20 years ago or more. The Building Employees Redundancy Trust in Queensland in, introduced a, um, a, um, an industry employee assistance program with Converge International where workers within the industry could get access to support. A similar uh, system was adopted by Burst in South Australia and Redifont in Western Australia. So already a long time ago, a long time that before we really started seriously to talk about mental health as a workplace issue, this industry were starting to look after mental health by making sure that there was counselling available to our workforce across the industry when they were struggling. Um, about 2004, a broad coalition of industry organisations, so uh, there was a Boss Q scheme, there was BIRD, there was uh, the government, there was a number of uh, employers, all the relevant unions, all put money in because we, we, we started to notice that we, we appeared to have a lot of suicides within the industry. We could see that from our superannuation records, we could see that from the, from the redundancy records. And um, so we hired the Australian Institute of Suicide Research and Prevention to, to look into that problem and find out whether it was really a big issue or not. And the ASAP report came back, I, I can't, can never remember where it's ASAP, but is it ASAP? As, as, yeah, I always get accused of saying it wrongly, probably with a Danish accent, um, was that the suicide rates within the industry was particularly high. 
And it was particularly high amongst the younger workers. And there was sort of something we already knew. And, and again, there was something that the industry were reacting to, to proactively at the time as well. In Canberra, the Master Builders Association and the CFMU got together and created OSHOPE to deal with suicide amongst apprentices in that industry. Uh, in Victoria, Incolink started the, um, the um, what do you call it, life care program to deal specifically with suicide amongst the apprentices within that industry. And around 2008, Mates and Construction was established um, and as we all have talked about today, have been growing with the support of this industry. So, so when it comes to this blueprint, we are, in my view, as an industry, already doing pretty well. So why would we then do that if we're already doing all right? So over the past 18 months or so, we've been talking to, particularly Beyond Blue, but other within the industry about saying, well, what should we do a blueprint and what would the purpose of being that? And the idea is really to start getting a catalogue of good ideas of the things that we know works within the industry that we can start pulling together into one comprehensive uh, strategy that helps both around mental health and suicide prevention. Sort of a framework that allows um, the, um, the proactive players in the industry to go out and lead and be the lone nuts, dancing out in front of other people joining, but also encouraging the rest of the industry to catch up uh, when the time is right for them. And I think a blueprint would be a really useful tool in order to achieve that as an industry. So um, with the support of the ACA and the Master Builders Association, the CFMU, the ETU, the AMWU, uh, a number of the tier one companies, we all met here in Sydney about in September last year to talk about this as a concept, as a blueprint. And we had um, industry leaders right across getting together. And within that day, it was unanimously decided that's something we need to do. We need to get a document we can, we can join on, a living document that we can work forward on. And we established a number of work groups that have met and discussed what, what needed to happen, um, and, and some leadership groups. And part of that was uh, we said we actually need to know where we're coming from in order to know whether we're heading in the right direction. So it was decided very early on to get Alison on board to go and really do a really good literature review and find out what do we actually know about mental health in our industry and around it, and um, what sort of our best practice in this area we can, we can learn from so that we can get that information rather than just start reinventing the wheel, we can actually sort of pick up from what other people have done. And I've completely forgotten my slides, uh, but that's all right, they would have been brilliant. <laughs> that's the round table there. Okay, and that's Alison. Thanks. <laughs> well, I'm not sure I can really compete with that. That was because I'm not. I'm not. I think that was actually brilliant. Thank you very much, Shogun. Um, I'm. Yes, I feel a bit nervous being described as articulate because that's a bit of a hit and miss, frankly, but I'll just bear with me. I'd like to first of all thank Jorgen and I'd like to thank the Mates in Construction organisation and the board for having a belief that I could take on this role and supporting me through that. Um, they are a fantastic group of men and, and women, increasingly more women, which is, is really good to see. They've seen me through two pregnancies, I've had babies and breastfeeding and breast pumps, so, and all these men at that stage were just took it in their strides, like, just don't mind me, I'm just over here feeding my child. So they've been really supportive. And I have just basically had the great pleasure of going along on this journey and watching this all unfold and, and being inspired by um, what you all do day to day. Um, and I really appreciate the personal stories because as a researcher, you can pull back and you can be completely distant and be a very objective and um, unfeeling about these things. And it's so good for people like me to be reminded every day of the real lives and the real stories behind that. So I just wanted to really very much extend my um, appreciation and, th and gratitude for having me here. So my job in putting this together was to think about what, what sort of information does the construction industry need to move ahead in progressing mental health and suicide prevention? And I, so we really tried to provide a bit of a platform. What does that say? What's down there? So, hang on. Sorry, you remember what I said about articulate? So really there were five goals in, in doing this report. First of all, to provide a description of the burden of suicide and the state of mental health generally within the industry to look at some of the factors that are influencing the mental health of construction workers, 
to provide an overview of if there had been any evaluated mental health um, or suicide prevention uh, programs done, provide an overview of best practice, and then to provide a goal, a sort of where we should be heading. So it was a bit of a big brief. I won't go into all of that. The report will be coming out very soon. So I'm just going to talk you through some of the overall high, high level things that came out of this. First of all, we need to think about mental health. And we have spoken a lot today about suicide. And we've spoken a little bit about mental illness. And when we set out to write this report, we reminded ourselves about what mental health is. So mental health, defined by the WHO is about more than the presence or absence of a mental of a mental health Ill, of mental illness. It's about a state of well-being. It inculcates positive mental health, subjective well-being. It's not just about suicidality, and it's not just about mental health diagnoses. So we wanted to try and build that into this. Um, so this model here is based on a fellow from America called Corey Keyes, who developed uh, the flourishing model of mental health. So the really the key thing that comes from this is that. Um, as I said before, it's not just about the presence of a mental disorder. Um, and he developed this model saying that someone uh, can be, have a variety, be in a variety of places regarding their mental health at any one time. So they can be, the highest level is flourishing when someone's really happy and they also have an absence of mental disorder and the lowest level is languishing where they have mental disorder but they're really unhappy. So I think the thing to think about here is people with depression can feel happy sometimes. Not all the time, but they can feel happy. People who don't have a mental disorder can feel really unhappy sometimes. And they can be getting along day to day feeling really unfulfilled. They may not have a clinical um, diagnosable mental illness, but they cannot be feeling great every day. So really it's this understanding that mental health is more than, um, it's more than just, as I said, presence or absence of a diagnosis. It's about how we're feeling day to day. It encapsulates positive mental health, subjective well-being, happiness, all these things we need to make us feel good. And we tried to build this into this model. And I think this is something the construction industry should consider moving forward. What about happiness? What about subjective well-being? It's not just about suicide. So this statistic I won't go through because we've I've seen it a lot today, but we all know that the burden of suicide is high, the burden of attempts are even higher, and we know that the impact of a suicide is huge on other people, and that's been really well demonstrated today in how many of us have been touched by suicide and how much of the impacts of suicide flows through our families and our communities. So I won't go through that. So this here is um, just a a description of what's happening within overall suicide rates within the construction industry. So up the top we have construction. Good news is construction suicide rates are coming down. So that's great. The, the red line is all, all people who are not in construction, but it's still really elevated. It's still about 70% above the rate of suicide among other employed people. So still a lot of work to be done there. Hang on, sorry. Oh, oh, OK. So this graph here is a little bit confusing, so just bear with me. So this shows the relative risk of suicide within each state. So at the bottom end of the graph, which is on the left, that, that, that is the rate of suicide among all other employed people in that state. So in the ACT, construction workers have a really elevated rate compared to other employed people. But you need to think about who's working in the ACT and what sort of occupations are there. So they're pretty highly skilled public servants, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a bigger difference in, say, the ACT po public health servant population compared to the construction. And then you've got the other states that um, are showing the relative risk of suicide. So what you always have to remember that this is in relation to who else is going on in that state. So across all states, pretty much, we have an elevated rate of suicide. Now, mental health. So what do we know about mental health in the construction industry? So we didn't really look into suicide rates within this because we all know that. We wanted to go out looking across international evidence saying, do construction workers have higher rates of depression? Do they have higher rates of anxiety? Do they have higher rates of substance use disorder? The evidence is really mixed. Um, the evidence really hasn't been done in Australia. We don't know that much about uh, the mental health of construction workers within Australia. We do know from some areas, uh, other areas of the world, like Finma Finland, Finman, Finland, that they do have elevated rates of depression. So it's hard to say what's going on with the mental health of construction workers. And I've heard day to day that some construction workers um, aren't reporting ill mental health and depression, but they're still dying by suicide. So I think what we need to do is do some more research there as an industry about understanding what mental health is like, not suicide, what, what is mental health like, what's happiness like, what's subjective well-being like within the industry. 
We do know that alcohol and drug use is higher within the industry than many others. And the ASRAP study Jorgen mentioned just earlier, um, I'm just waving at Jacinta Horgood down there who's, I always look at whatever person's from whatever organisation whenever you're mentioning a previous study. Um, we do know that alcohol was a, a major risk factor for people who took their own lives within the construction industry. A lot of them had used alcohol before they died. And they do this in many other industries as well. And the key thing is, why is the alcohol being used? A lot of the time it's being used to self-medicate a problem. So we do know that that is an issue. Um, and we're not quite sure about mental illness in general. So a bit of a mixed picture about what, what, what we know. As I said, a lot more to be done. So what is best practice? Now this was a little bit easier. We looked across all the sort of guidelines that have been done within this area and there have been a lot internationally. So we have the Mental Health Workplace Alliance which is here done in Australia, StressWise, the Canadian Standards, the, uh, Promoting Positive Mental Health in the Workplace, etc. People at Work, WHO. So there's a lot of these guides out and they're all very good resources and they include tools and assessment kits and things like that. And we refer to these within the report and would encourage you to look at them. But just in case you're lazy, like me, we did a, on, on the basis of all of these, what can we say we should do? And I wasn't me meaning in this report to develop my own guidelines because um, I wouldn't be able to do this properly, but I'm just trying to provide an overall summary of what are the key things all of best practice is saying we should do. Now, this is in a graph which is a bit hard to understand, so I'm gonna go to this next slide. So the first thing is reduce harmful exposures at work. So we need to think about what sort of workplaces we're putting our workers into. We need to think about what industry pressures are driving people to feel insecure, are driving people to feel not supported in their work, to feeling as though they can't have enough control over their work. And this is a, a key risk factor, I think, within the construction industry. At the same time, we need to promote the positive aspects of mental health and the positive aspects of work generally. So what at work is good? Is it social support? Is it the fact that construction is inherently a creative industry in which you're creating things and you're, and you're building things? Um, is it about something else? Is it about the flexibility? Is it about, you know, there's a lot of different things that you could unpack there. So I think we need to focus on both the positive while trying to reduce the negative. We need to look at mental health and suicide prevention literacy. So this is really mates in construction and it's some of the other presentations that were in the concurrent sessions today. We need to teach people um, about where, when and how to seek help. We need to reduce stigma. Probably, I think that's pretty, been pretty much shown today that that's a key risk factor for men. And we need to make people feel safe when they're seeking help. Facilitate early intervention and treatment, Make, making sure people are able to, when they are at risk, having those pathways through which they can um, be referred to someone who can help them at that time of need. And we need to provide ongoing return to work and, um, sorry, we need to provide return to work and ongoing support. And this also includes bereavement. Bereavement is a complex process. Losing someone on a work site has ramifications that go beyond a day, a week. They can go on for years and we need to be sensitive and support people throughout those practices. So the key sort of recommendations that we came away, um, that really I'd like the industry to think about within the next, you know, few months is we know what to do, but how do we go about doing it? The construction industry is complex. It has many, many layers to it. How do we begin to progress better mental health for all workers at each level of that society, or at, at, at each level? What is a reasonable benchmark? So I suggested some benchmarks. I said, look, you probably just don't want to be measuring suicide rates. You probably want to be measuring things like happiness, subjective well-being, um, depression, anxiety, a whole range of mental health measures. I think we need to focus on some of those positive measures, though, of success. What can large um, employers do and what can be expected from smaller employers? This is not gonna be a one size fits all approach, but we need to think about how we can support different um, construction companies in moving through this process of improving mental health. And what will be the drivers for making a blueprint a living document? What can we do to encourage further, further participation and support from the industry? So in conclusion, I like to think of suicide prevention is a road along which we're all traveling. It's a continuum. And all industries and all workplaces are on this road. So compared to other industries, 
The construction industry is much more, much more further along that road than others. It's, I would applaud you for actually having this conference today and taking leadership in this area because there's many industries in Australia which don't even acknowledge this as a problem. I'd like to say that um, more needs to be done because suicide is still high. We need collective energy and we need leadership in this area. Um, and I think that you being here today is part of that journey. So I'd like to thank you very much and um, I look forward to seeing you in the future as we move along this journey. Thanks.